Well, hello everybody. We're going to walk you through how I measure this chickadee bird for the first time. Now, this was recorded. You're going to notice the hands are probably a little busy, but I've lost the audio track. So I'm going to try to re-record this for you and let you know what I did. Now, at this point, I was actually originally considering doing the winter version of the black cap chickadee. You can see how fluffy and soft he looks, how round he is. Um, and I actually went ahead and I did a new plan based on this chickadee with the mouth open. And uh, and I managed to scale it and match it so it matched the diagram perfectly. And that is the one I wanted to go ahead with, but then I realized the blank that came with this kit was for the summer chickadee and it was too narrow. The black cap chickadee winter one is very fat and fluffy, but the wood wasn't enough. So I've had to go and make a small change of plan and I'm going with the summer one instead. It does match the blank that came inside this kit that I got from um, Razor Tip. Now, the difference is I'm not gonna carve it with a straight head because straight heads look like they're stuffed. And I want this thing to look alive. I want it to tell a story. I want it to look like it's doing something interesting. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one here. My plan is I'm still gonna carve it, but maybe I'll just turn the head a little bit. Make the make it just a little more interesting. Make it look like it's doing something or it's just noticed something. So that's the plan. That means I'm gonna basically carve this one as it is from right from the kit with just the small variation to, to bring it up a level. So if anybody else gets this uh, plan from Razor Tip, they'll be able to follow along with me as I do the initial layout, the initial measurements. And I'm gonna tell you how to prepare a bird for that first time you start cutting away. It's called the rough cut. Um, you don't just carve in, you don't just tear into it. The bird has to be anatomically correct, which means you will have to do some measurements. You will have to do a little bit of tracing, a little bit of line drawing to make sure you get the anatomy just right. There is artistry involved, like how I move the head, but you need these things like center line and balancing and making sure that it looks like uh, the stuff that's inside the bones and the muscles and everything is where it needs to be. So you need good reference points. You need good lines. And that means you start by measuring, starting with the center line up the axis of the body. Now, back when I was a kid, I used to measure these. I would take that ruler and I go measure little points along the way. And that was very tedious. And in a wise man, I believe it was Mr. Al Fowler, uh, no, Mr. Bruce Lepper taught me that if you eyeball it, you know what? It's almost just as good. So I, this is one of the few times you can eyeball a bit. So take a look here. I, I took a crack at eyeballing a dot there and don't do a lot of dot squiggly lines, by the way, that's not good. Just be precise. A dot, see I'm trying not to make them too fat. Precision matters. I'm putting a dot here. Now, to my eye, these dots look like they're about halfway across the bird. And then what you do and what he told me to do and what I recommend everybody do is once you do those dots, check them, see how wide they are on both sides. And what I found is remarkably enough when I eyeballed it, um, they are actually almost bang on. So when you're doing this part, it's actually not that bad. And checking takes a fraction of the time that it takes to find the width, calculate the halfway point, measure the halfway point. And there's usually some fiddling because the fractions and the millimeters are hard to read. So it's just easier to eyeball it and check it. So, but do check it every time. Make sure because these are your guidelines. And as you're carving the bird and you're taking away wood and you're sanding away, this line's gonna disappear. And as you see it's starting to vanish, you're gonna redraw it again and again and again. So this line has to be really clear because it's the line that tells, it's, it's, your, it's your North Star. It guides you as you're working through the bird. And as you're getting into the, some of the wilder stuff when you, when you know, wing has moved up a little bit on this side, maybe down a bit on that side, the head has turned. As you start carving that, it can look a little distorted. This will always keep your feet on the ground and, and guide you. Now, the beak on this bird, when they cut the blank, it's one of the best cut beaks I've ever seen. Usually they're very square, cut in the front, but this one is sharp, the eye is not bad. Although I checked it and I think I don't trust the eye. I always check these blanks to see if I trust them. But um, yeah, the beak, is that's gonna have to move if I'm gonna move his head. It's not a big deal but we can do that. Now, my dad made me this, this ruler. He photocopied a ruler onto, onto this clear plastic material. It's come in really handy over time. 
But if you don't have anything like this, like my dad's a bit of a uh, clever boots, if you can't find something like that, then any kind of, you know, bendy plastic or any kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's something even off packaging material. Like you, if you buy a product that has some soft plastic on it, anything will do as long as it's got a bit of an edge to it, you can put your pencil up against, but you can bend it to ra wrap around the contour of something like a bird. So I'm going to measure that center line up the middle axis. It's a very, very important line. I try to make it as clean as I can. Again, no squi no scratching back and forth and back and forth. That can make it difficult later on. I try to make one clean line. And if I can't make one clean line, I'll erase it and I'll do it again. And it's okay to double check your measurements when you're first doing this because once you start cutting the wood away, you can't go back. So now I have a clean line on that side. Now, I used to do, try to do a clean line up the middle on the sides too. And then I realized... I was obliterating the wings. And uh, so on this one, you're going to make a little exception. We need to find out where the bottom of the wings are. That has to be kept safe. We don't want that wood destroyed. But anything underneath the wing, that's fair game. So to find that spot, I'm going to need the, the up and down line, that vertical line. Now, this plan is great. This blueprint has a vertical line, so I just have to find it. It's going to be, I could eyeball it right about here. And I could try eyeballing it down there. But the easiest thing to do is while it's still a blank, while it's nice and square like this, I could just put it right on top of the pattern. And then I could see the center line peeking at the top and peeking at the bottom. Mark it on the bird. This is going to come in so handy to help me orientate the bird later. So we'll draw that line straight across. Now, what do I mean by orientation? Well, I'm going to be looking down like one of these 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 patterns are orthographic and you're kind of looking down on the bird and because it's got a round bottom it could roll too far forward or roll too far back and it, it kind of distorts the lengths of the bird you're looking down the axis of the bird so to get the lengths just right i need a fixed point an up and down point so i could say when i'm looking at the blueprint and i'm looking at this 3d object up and down are in agreement and i can go ahead and measure away so this up and down line is going to come in very handy. So I've got an up and down line. I'm going to get one on this side too, just so as I know which way is vertical. Because it's so easy to roll the bird forward. It really is. So there we go. There's my second line. And now I've got a good reference point for when I want to go do the wings. That's going to come in very handy. It's simply count up from there and count the same on the bird. So let's measure. <laughs> you know what? You can't avoid measuring. So have a ruler and a pencil and eraser handy when you're doing this. Your three favorite tools when you're bird carving is going to be your pencil, your eraser, and your ruler. So let's take a minute here. We'll measure that up, get it just right. And precision counts this time because it's anatomy. And anatomy will count if you're going to get this bird right. So... There we go. We measure up that amount on this side. And we'll flip it over and measure it up that amount on that side. Of course, if we're going to draw a line to show where the wings are, we're going to need two points on that line. So this is the first one. That's easy. I've got a reference line. It's the vertical. But right around the bum there, you notice how the wing, the bottom edge of the wings go toward the tail and they kind of intersect right around where the bum is, the rump. Well, that's not a bad reference point. It just sort of goes up from the rump a little bit. I might get the direction wrong a little bit, but it's kind of hard when it's only about, what, three millimeters? So we're going to head to measure that up, right? And there's a nice curve on the bird that indicates where that is. See the curve? And there's a curve on the pattern. So I can find that point on the 3D bird and on the 2D pattern. It, they share it in common. So at that, that point, I'll just measure up the, I think it's about three millimeters. And then I will go up on the bird and say, well, that's right about there, as long as it's vertically or that vertical line again helps me to know which way to measure up. One, two, three. There we go. And then we'll flip it over. When I do one, I immediately do the other side with that same measurement because it's easy to forget or get a number wrong. One, two, three. Very good. And now I have the bottom edge of the wing. That means essentially the center line on the belly to that bottom edge of the wing, that can all now be rounded off wood. That's, a lot of that is wood I don't need. 
A bird is essentially a very round, it's actually a very egg-shaped object. It's egg-shaped in all directions. Whether you're looking at it from bottom up or top or side or front, there's a sort of oval to it. So the belly is going to be the fat part of the oval and the top of the bird is going to be the smaller part. And that, a lot of that wood's going to have to disappear. So this line is really important because that wing, we're not going to take that, that any wood off that wing part yet. I need that to stay on until later. If I take it off too soon, I'm going to get lost. And I might accidentally take more wood than I should. And I do that from time to time. Now, you notice how the wing curls up in the front here? You kind of get that. That's the wrist. You get that effect on a summer bird. Notice on a winter bird, though, where his chest feathers pluff out and they go over the wrist. The curve is kind of cuppy backwards. Whereas on the summer bird, that cupped effect, that roundy effect is on the front because the wing is on the outside of the chest feathers. So this is a summer bird, and it's important to understand a little bit about anatomy, just a little bit, and a little bit about, well, the seasonality of the bird is very important. The colors change in different times of the year. The feathers are different fluffing at different times of the year. So you need to pick a story. My story is a uh, summer bird. So he's going to have his wings, his wrist, probably on the outside. So it doesn't hurt to know roughly where does that curl up begin? So let's measure, taking along that line we've already drawn and go, eh, that's about 20. That looks like 20 to me. We'll just start curling it up right about there. Don't think I can go too far wrong. I mean, now at this point, it doesn't have to be exact. It's an estimate. I'm going to make this a little fuzzy. I just want to know roughly where to preserve the wing. So right about there, the wing will be preserved. I, it's not going to be critical in the roughing out, but it can help orientate me when I'm carving away some wood just to know, hey, the wing's going to be right about there. Okay, that's pretty good. So now we've got the wing saved. We've got a top and bottom line on the axis saved. So the next thing we're going to need to figure out is going to be the head. Now, this right now is a line straight ahead as if the bird's looking straight forward. That'll help me find the beak. The tip of the beak is there. But if I turn the head a little bit, the beak is going to move. Now, they've given me an axis point where the head's going to rotate around. Most plans don't do that, but this one's very good. And it would be a good reference one to keep around if you're going to do your own pattern to know roughly how far back. Um, better than guesstimating, which I've had to do in the past. I have made my own patterns, and uh, it's, not a, it's a challenge. So measuring this, of course, is not easy because the head is round. And how do you know how far back from the beak to go? Well, it's hard to do when the body's round, but if I draw a line at the base of the tail here, the tail also makes a good reference point for length. So I can measure the length from the head to the tail. Believe it or not, it's a lot flatter than that round head, even though there's a lot of contours going from the top of the head all the way down the back to the tip of the tail. But if I take that and I measure the distance, which I think is just a millimeter shy of 10 centimeters. Now, I've got to still figure out which is up on the bird. Because remember, the bird's still sloping downward. And I can't put the ruler right on the bird. That would distort the measurement. The plan is flat as if you're looking straight down over top of the bird. So I have to raise the ruler up. So it's also relatively flat when I'm figuring out the distance. So I go roughly looking down this is where the tip of the tail is. So, and if I make the ruler as flat as I can and the bird is as vertical as I can, I can find the point where the axis of the head is. Now, I realize I probably could have used the other bird below, which was the side view, and that probably I could have laid the ruler flat on that and got an angular one, which would have been more accurate. Now, I'm thinking to myself, in retrospect, that's probably what I should have done. Um, but overall, that, that spot is actually working pretty good. If I draw the line across the top there and I check it, the line I've drawn across the top there, that's about right. And I went ahead and checked it on different angles, which I did off camera for a minute because some of them, well, that's when I discovered I'm not entirely pleased with maybe where the eye will be. It's definitely going to move anyway when the beak moves. Now, here's the artistry. I get to choose where the beak is looking. So I'm going to, I'm going to just do a little turn this time. From there, there's where the head's going to pivot. And there's where the beak's looking. So I'm going to take that curvy plastic and do a sort of a 
This is kind of a difficult thing to do with your fingers. It's not easy to get it to go flat on all those contours. But I'm going to try to lie this ruler on there and get a nice line drawn to show me, aha, uh -huh, that's where the center of the head is now. It's not where it used to be. This is where it is now. And that's where the beak is. And I'll bring that underneath for a bit. And now the head is turned. Now you notice how the beak sort of foreshortens there as it turns. It was the full length of the bird, but if I turn my pencil, you'll see that it's short, it seems to be back a bit. It doesn't go all the way to the tip of the bird. And I made that mistake once as a young carver and I kept the length the same. And of course I didn't realize the beak would shorten up. So it's important to catch that now. This is roughly where eyeballing, that's where the tip of the beak will be. And of course, when you're eyeballing, check your work. So I put my ruler on there, uh, found the length. Again, it's a kind of a contoured head, but I can't avoid it now. So I got to try to figure out, hmm, what is the length of that, bird, that beak? So looking down and kind of eyeballing it, it actually wasn't too bad of an estimation. Looked like it was right on the button. So I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to maybe do some changes later, but that's the line. So that's where the beak is. Yep, right about there. It looks kind of funny because the beak was, the whole head was designed for head-on look, but this one's turned. So it is going to start to look a little distorted. That head-on car, that's going to be head-on in one dimension, but it's going to be turned in another dimension. We'll fix it. But that sense of rolling, the belly, the bird can roll on its belly when you're measuring, really is kind of a, a pain in the butt. But, you know, uh, if you take in time and you find a reference point, like that, sometimes it can be the eye, sometimes it can be the beak. And more often, though, I will take the tip of the tail because it just has a lot less, is a lot less busy than, say, the eyes or the head or the tail or the nose is right now. So that appears to be a good line. And I'm going to go with that line. So, and that's me being really obsessive compulsive. I have to check it again and again and again. Now, the line should have gone all the way to the, I kind of made a mistake there. Always take that line all the way to the back of the head. And I stopped at the pivot point. I should have carried it on through, but I needed an extra pair of, an extra set of fingers maybe to do that. I see that, that little contour where the neck is. Unfortunately, now that's going to be up a little bit from where it was. It gets a little foreshortened, just like the beak did when I turned it. But it's not bad. That's uh, that's enough for me to get that figured out. Now, I'm going to put some quarter marks. Remember that we drew the line halfway? Well, if I do a quarter mark now, halfway between the edge and the center line, that quarters the back. And if I do the same on the side, well, we did a line where the, where the wig is. But if I kind of guesstimate where the halfway is on the bird on the side, it's about there and about there. It's above where the wing is. And I quarter that just like I did on the top. Quarters, quarters. The top quarter from that quarter to the quarter on the side, that can all be carved away. That can all be sheared away. That's all unnecessary wood. So this is a neat little trick that I think it was Mr. Bruce Lepper again who showed me that if you're trying to figure out an I don't know, even to this day, you get a little nervous carving off the wood. You're thinking, uh-oh, that's a lot of wood going. I'm going to make a mistake. But this quarter, this top quarter here, you can do the same on the bottom. You can shear that at a 45 degree angle and that wood is completely useless. It doesn't do anything. It's a really neat trick for quickly roughing on a bird. Just take that off at 45 and you're going to be fine. Now that middle half, like the, the two quarters in the middle, keep those. The two quarters on the side, keep those, especially under the wings. We don't touch that. But these quarters, or even around the belly, they go. There's my wings. They're protected. There's my quarter mark. There's my quarter mark. From the quarter on the bottom to the quarter on the side, around the belly there, this is all wood you don't need. This is, can go. And if you take that off, you can have a fair amount of confidence to know that you're not going to mess anything up. Don't go too far forward into the chest area, though. We do want this to be a fairly round little guy. So we're going to basically, it's kind of a dodgy thing when it comes to the chest. Dial it back a little bit when you get to the chest area. 
But remember, these lines are in parallel. That center line's in parallel. So the lines are going to more or less converge as you get closer to the chest, too. So you're not going to take too much off. Uh, just follow that quarter rule and you'll be okay. Now that we have those quarter lines done, let's go back to the head. This is the widest point of the head. I dare not take any wood when I'm roughing that goes inside that. But any wood on the outside of those lines, that all has to go. Because there's a lot of wood on this head. Look at how thick that is. That is the whole width of the body, but the head isn't nearly that thick. So taking a moment now and finding the maximum width. Now that's the, where the cheeks are. That little, that smaller one that you see, that smaller width, that's above the eyes. That's the eyebrow or the eye ridge or the skull, top of the skull. It's the fatter one on the bottom is his cheeks. And if I preserve those, he'll have enough cheeks. So let's find that width on the bird for the where he's turning his head. It goes roughly there on that side and roughly here on this side. And we want to draw these ones in parallel. I'm not going to precisely find the head yet. I'm just roughing. But I just want to remove a lot of extra wood I'm not going to need right off the top. So any wood I can get rid of, any bulk wood, just makes finding the more detailed stuff later that much easier. He's he's basically a bird trapped inside wood, and I gotta I gotta get him out of there. So I'm gonna take my little ruler. I'm gonna roughly try to get this line as straight as I can, but it, it needs to be parallel to the center line. Once I find that cheeky zone, I know there's still way too much wood on there, and I will find it later. But for now, let's just take off whatever we don't need. You know, very rough cuts. I don't, I've got a rough uh, cutting bit for that for carving off large chunks of wood. It's not meant to go up in detail or, or close. It's not very soft. So I don't want to get too, you know, I don't want to, I want to leave a lot of extra wood on there still so I can go in there with a gentler bit and go off it and do a nicer job. Now I'm looking at this. I'm thinking to myself, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. This looks fatter on this side than on this side. This is why you measure and you check and you check because I'm wrong. I've made a mistake. That's the measurement there. And I go over here and whoop, nope, 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 nope. That's way too skinny. That wasn't right. That put that line in the wrong spot. So this is where my best friend's going to have to come out. It's Mr. Where is he hiding? Eraser. Hello, Mr. Eraser. <laughs> Let's go in and fix this little mistake I've made. Um, yes, I'm going to erase a lot of lines. You, you should be ready to erase them too. Make them as cleanly erased as you can because they, old lines can merely make a mess of your day. So remeasure, recheck, and try to get the head just as well as you can. Uh, and it's hard because there's that distortion and the bird is a fun, funny shape and it's not cooperating with your fingers. But if you get it oh, right about yep, there. Now, don't worry if it looks like it should go off on the wood. Remember, it's way too wide on the front, way too wide. There's going to be... Yeah, it's going to get gonna kind of get cut off funny, but there's still way too much wood and there's lots of room there, especially around the, the tip of the beak, which gets very narrow. And I'm going to remeasure the width and I'm going to redraw that line. And now the width of the head should be preserved all the way to the beak. So I've got lots of spare wood to work with. And that looks about right, much better than it did before. Now, if I'm going to work it all on the shoulders, and, you know, there's a lot of wood up there on the shoulders. He looks like a, a quarterback right now with his padding on. He doesn't need all that wood up there. But somewhere back there is the back of his head, and that is wood that's going to stay. So I got to find roughly where the back of his head. So, again, I go from that, that pivot point back, and I go, where is the back of his head going to be? So I put the ruler on there. And I try again to find up. And again, it's a little awkward because the bird squibs in your hand. Believe it or not, it just doesn't want to sit still when you're trying to get it in just the right vertical orientation. But if I'm patient, I can get it to just sit still long enough. There's the mark for the back of the head. So it's roughly cuppy shaped. So we'll just sort of go in there and I don't have to be too precise because again, there's a lot of wood there still. But just so as I don't take off more than I need to, I need to know that that's where the back of his head's going to be. And that's going to be a nice little reference, at least for the first few cuts. It's not 
I don't know. It's not even as straight as I would like. The problem is the wood is already, again, it's pre-cut for it looking straight ahead. So when you start turning, it kind of gets distorted by the cuts that were already there. But, you know, it's going to get a little tightened up. There's a groove there that's kind of throwing my lines off. So it throws the eye off. And that's that's an issue when you turn the head. It throws the eye off. Even the turn, even when the beak cut, well, you'll see later on. It looks, it look like everything's corkscrewed because of the. It's it's a piece of it's a turned head on a cut head body, but we can fix the corkscrewing, and I'll show you how to do that later. It was a little scary at first, but I got some nice tips, and I still follow those tips today, and I'll discuss them afterward. So now that I got his head turned, and the length is just about right, time to concentrate on this tail because there's still a lot of wood back there too. The tail was also cut to the full width of the body. So there's a ton of wood in there. So, oh, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes here just to kind of eyeball where the where that neck is. Just put a quick neckline in. That's where the back of the head is. And I know this neckline's gonna move because the head's straight again on this wood. It's just a kind of idea of where I don't take I mean, I'm carving off the top of the, the sides of the head. I got to have to know where those shoulders and the wrists are because I got to know how far back to cut into the toward the body when I'm taking the head down. So that's roughly how far back I've got to go. And that's because the head's going to come in quite significantly from the body. It's not nearly as thick. So there's going to be some, I'm going to cart right into the sides there to get that wood. All that wood you see on there has got to go. All those quarters are going to go. <clears throat> and now, I'm going to look at that tail. Because that's a lot of wood on there. The most important thing is to preserve the width of the tail. And the width is wider at the base and, and skinnier at the top. But just be on the safe side. I look at the part where it's at the widest. Again, I don't want to do any detail work now. I figure out where it's at the widest, then I go, that's the width of this tail. So measure a point on either side of the center line. One, two. I use the same measurement to go up the wood a little bit higher. Oh, I'm checking my measurement, though, to be sure. But it should be the same measurement. Because I think I want, an, I usually typically like a nice parallel line. And there we go. And now I know roughly where the width is. Now the tip of the wing tips is also an important mark. So I want to know, I don't want to accidentally clip the wings in any way. So I need to know how far up the wing tips start on the center line. Oh, looks like I want to, I'm going to draw in those, those, the sides of the tail first. Nope. That's it. I am looking for the wing tips. So the wing tips are right there, and, and what, how about that? It falls right on the groove that was already cut in the wood because there was no changes made there. So that, I know that I got that one just about bang on. And that's pretty good. But the uh, the tail will continue up the wings a little bit. You notice where the tail joins uh, appears to meet the wings? So I know it's going to be a little higher than I've got that measurement now. So i got to have to measure up. I'm going to measure the, the side line. I'm going to draw those side lines first so I can see where they are. But that's just to that point. That's not the whole tail length yet. That's the tail length so far. Right. Now, let's go back to the, the wings. And we'll measure how far up the tail goes before they finally meet the wings. Okay, so we measure that up, the body. Again, trying to compensate a little bit for the distortion of the body. It's not orthograph orthographic. Make it up and down, which of course the bird does not want to cooperate. I used to have a sandbag I could put the, uh, the bird on, and it kept them from moving. My mother made them. They were, they were little bags filled with rice, actually. They were very good for holding a bird still. I'm going to have to track mine down again. There we go, and I know that roughly, if I were to extend those wings to that point, I'm oh, sorry, the tail to that point, I could roughly carve outward a rounded wing. Now, wings are generally not round like this, 
but I know that they're safe inside that wood. Outside that round line, I know that that's completely safe to destroy. I can go ahead and carve that away, knowing that I'm not going to destroy the wings and I'm not going to harm the tail in any way. I've got more than enough room there to work. So, that's not too bad. It's not precise, but it's all right. I'm going to go back over it again anyway. Uh, later on, when I get, want to get a little more accurate, I have my center line, so I could do it anytime. So this bird is essentially drawn out. This wood can go, this wood can go, those quarters can go, and the heads can ready to carve off. But generally speaking, I'm ready for roughing out, and I will do roughing out in the next episode where I'm going to take this extra wood off, and we're going to begin to find the body shape for this bird. So not bad. It takes a bit of measuring. It takes about 30 minutes, and then you're ready to go ahead and get your tools and start carving away. So looking forward to seeing you in the next episode, everybody, where we will do our first rough cuts. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and come back to us again, www.apprenticebirdcarver.ca.